The Bucks beat the Heat and improved to 7-0 and since Chris Middleton returned to the lineup. And he had 24 points in 20 minutes. So the big question is, is Chris Middleton back? And there was also some minor news across the NBA today. Kyrie Irving is now a Dallas Maverick. He's playing under Jason Kidd and alongside Luka Doncic. We have to ask what this means for the Bucks in the Eastern Conference. There could be still some moves to come. But this has completely changed the landscape. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks. My name is Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on this show Monday to Friday and also find my work over at ESPN and alongside me from the Bucks Radio Network, a big week coming up on the Bucks Radio Network, potentially a historic week with LeBron and the Lakers. We're going to talk about that more as the week goes on. It's Justin Garcia for today's episode that is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred bucks with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com promo code locked on. Of course, we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first watch or first listen of every day. You can find this show for free on your audio platform wherever you get your podcasts, or of course on YouTube. And we highly recommend that you like this video. Comment on this video, subscribe, hit the notifications, do all that stuff because that uh, helps us with the views and gets more people in here and the conversation started, which we really appreciate. It's been a big couple of weeks on the show here for sure. And it's going to be a big week as we get close to the trade deadline. We're going to get to Kyrie, Justin, because I woke up to the news here in Australia. Twitter had already been doing its thing for the previous couple of hours as the trade went down. He's heading to Dallas and perhaps most importantly for the Bucks, he is no longer in the Eastern Conference, and we're going to get into that. But the big question I have to ask you, the Bucks did beat the Miami Heat yesterday as we're recording this, 123-115. And we should say, look, Giannis has had some quiet games against the Heat in the past, but his tear absolutely continued. He, he had 35 points, 15 rebounds, 11 assists. You brought up the question. I don't know how many people have had a 50-point game and transferred it directly into a triple-double, but we love to see it. But the question I've got for you, is Chris Middleton back? Because he's looked really good since he came back. They've been going slowly, 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 which I think we all agree with. But he's scoring the per-minute stuff. He's been efficient. And overall, the Bucs just look like the Bucs with Chris Middleton back on the floor. Yeah, it's funny how that works, that uh, all of a sudden you're good again <laughs> with your best players on the floor. And uh, the Giannis thing, I think we should uh, give a tip of the cap to, as for the reverse jinx, to Dave Kane, who asked Eric Spolstra before the game, you guys have done a pretty good job of, slowing down ah, or containing nice. Giannis. Uh, how would you explain that? And even Spo said, we've done what now? That <laughs> Eric Spolstra thought it was mm-hmm. kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe the numbers indicate that, but it hasn't been the case. Um, but the Chris Middleton thing, you know, you and I were talking about it before. I know it's a very small sample size and um, the Heat are a, a relatively good team. The Clippers, despite the record, are a very good opponent and especially at full strength. But it hasn't really been like a, a, a seven-game run full of world beaters that the Bucks have played. Still, uh, 10th best offense and best net rating. Defense is up there again. The defense is, has been better statistically than it's been all year. Um, and look, you can point to they haven't played great teams. I would counter with, well, the offense against the same not great teams was down to 24th. So it's just good to have Chris Middleton back on the floor and there's a number of plays where you just see how much he changes things with the looks that he's able to create for guys like Grayson and Allen. And, you know, even seeing plays that maybe break down and in the past it was going to be a shot clock violation or a rust shot. Chris Middleton has the ability to create shots and just another guy that has that chemistry with Giannis to get things going. It's just been so good to see for all the patience we've preached of, Give it time, and we'll see how this team looks when they're full strength. I mean, for those of us that have been maintaining that line, it feels pretty good to see what you're seeing now. Yeah, I think part of the reason why I said the late January, for those that have listened to this show for a few weeks, you would have heard me say it. I've definitely said it to you, Justin. I was like, if the, if Middleton isn't back by the end of January, I'm really going to start to panic because you probably understood that there was going to need to be this ramp-up period. Now, I'm totally fine. I mean, clearly the Bucs are winning right now, so there, there shouldn't be some crazy sense of urgency. They're 36 and 17. I know they've won the seven straight since Chris has come back, but before that, they won a few games as well. So they've been on, on a really great run. And the standings have just broken up a little bit. The Knicks beat 
Philly today, which is nice for the Bucks. The Bucks are actually only Again. one game behind the Celtics, and they have got a matchup coming up soon here. So it's going to be an interesting round. The Bucks go out west. We know they get the back to back. Lakers, Clippers. First, they've got a game against Portland tomorrow. That's right, isn't it? Portland tomorrow. Yep. So there's a few games before we get to that, but everyone will be eyeing off that Celtics matchup. But yeah, I mean, right now, Chris playing those 20 minutes per game, really the, the chemistry is the big thing. I mean, that's the that's the one thing with a guy like Chris that comes into the lineup. We saw that lob that he threw to Giannis and it was just a little bit of eye contact. Giannis just puts his hand in the air. Chris is like, all right, Giannis is there. I can just throw it wherever and he'll go get it. We know those two guys fit perfectly together. It's interesting that you mentioned Grace and Allen, though, because we're going to get to the Kyrie stuff, which was the big trade news. And it feels like that's now going to be where some dominoes start to fall. And we'll get into some of the proposed offers because one of the proposed offers reportedly included Jay Crowder. So we'll, we'll get into that. But as far as the Bucks, and I'm seeing a lot of this on the YouTube stream, the Clippers game spooked some fans, some Bucks fans, I think, when it comes to Grace and Allen. He didn't have a big night against a, a bigger team that has those big wings and it was bringing back some memories of the Boston Celtics. But he's been playing really, really good basketball over this stretch as well. And against Miami, he was seven for 11, four for seven from three. He got you 19 points. He was a team high plus 21 when he was on the floor. So his play has been really, really improved moving forward. Now you get the conspiracy theorists. Or not, I don't know if conspiracy is the right word, but the, the people that look at it differently and they say, well, Grayson Allen is boosting his trade value. It doesn't look like that original reported deal with Barker and War and George Hill is going to cut it for Jay Crowder. That looks like that's out. What have you seen from Grayson Allen? And were you spooked by the Clippers game? No, um, just because if this team is healthy, Grayson Allen's not going to be a closing player for you. And I think we both talked about this last year of you know, for all the struggles that Grayson had in the series against the Celtics. And as Bud said, a media day, he didn't play well. He'd be the first one to tell you he could play better. It looks differently if Chris Middleton is on the floor. I do think some of the things that Grayson has had to take on out of necessity this year with no Chris is going to be very beneficial to the team as you move forward. And, you know, specifically, he'd be the first to tell you he's always been able to do it, but his just ability to create a little bit more and put the ball on the floor and attack the basket, that's going to be very helpful when this team is full strength. So I wasn't really spooked. And again, it's not a knock on Grayson, but when this team is healthy, he's not going to be one of the closers and you're going to pick and choose your spots. I get it's a bad matchup in terms of the length. And I, you know, I keep mentioning too, everything you do should really be centered around how does this stack up against the Celtics and how will this help us in a series against Boston uh, not that Grayson, I, I still don't think he's unplayable against teams like that if you're healthy. And, you know, the other end of that is if Chris Middleton or anybody goes out and you have to bump him up a line, you got bigger problems than just Grayson Allen. Well, as we keep on saying, the reason why Grayson Allen has been in all these trade talks is because of the contract and it can help you get to, uh, you know, the level of some players when it comes to salary matching from that standpoint, but let us know in the YouTube stream. Do you think it's February 6th here in Australia, late on February 5th over where you are, Justin, the trade deadline, February 9th. It is coming up very, very soon. And I still just have this suspicion. I mean, I, I you, you hear some stuff along the way, Justin, if you talk to the right people and it, it sounds like the calls are being made. It sounds like whether or not something comes through, but history also suggests the bucks have been traders at the deadline. So I'm very, very curious to see what happens over the next couple of days. Uh, one final one on just this last little stretch of the Bucks before we move to the Kyrie Irving stuff. Giannis, over the last seven games, just putting up a casual 39.5 points, 14.5 rebounds, five assists as well, 60% from the field, 35% from the uh, from the three-point line. FanDuel, who we know is a great uh, supporter of the Lockdown Podcast Network, currently has Giannis third favorite for the MVP at plus 700. But to me... This last little stretch, you're starting to hear a little more buzz for Giannis and what he's doing. And all of a sudden, people are looking at that record and the Bucs have been stacking up the wins. They're 36 and 17. And people are just starting to take a little bit more notice of Giannis in the MVP stuff. But uh, he's been absolutely outrageous for the last little week here. But let's talk about prize picks before we get to Kyrie. Pick two to six players. And if they score more or less than the prize picks projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And I would suggest... 
based on the numbers I just read out when it comes to Giannis, if you've been playing prize picks and you've been going to over with Giannis, you've probably been pretty happy over the last couple of weeks. Uh, there's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. You can really get any sport you want. Uh, NBA, obviously. Uh, NFL, mostly done, but uh, you'll be able to do it for the Super Bowl. Uh, baseball, not too far away, which feels weird. We just entered February, so I'm sure that uh, the baseball stuff is going to fire up soon. College sports, but it's all there, and you can make your entries in 60 seconds or less. It's safe, uh, fast withdrawals, and currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. If you deposit 100 bucks, they'll give you 100 Deposit 50, they'll give you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to 100 bucks at prizepicks.com. All right, Justin, before we <laughs> really dive into what this means for the Milwaukee Bucks, we shouldn't be surprised anymore. We just shouldn't. For what's happened the last five, six years with Kyrie Irving, nothing should surprise us. And by the way, he's really starting to stack up the number of teams that he's played for in his career. It's been adding rapidly over the last four or five years, but now he's on the Dallas Mavericks. The main pieces of the trade, there's some draft picks and all those types of things, but the main pieces in terms of what's going to impact the teams this year, well, currently as of today, and maybe there's some more moves to come. But essentially, Irving goes to Dallas. The Nets get Spencer Dinwiddie. He goes back there. He was a part of that Nets team that was... Pretty nice back in the day, sort of the plucky underdogs. And Dorian Finney-Smith, who is a certainly a handy wing defender there as well. And probably the, the major piece, which is scary for a lot of fans, is the 2029 unprotected first-round pick. You know, is Luca going to be there? Who knows? But, but what did you think when this trade went down? Because um, all this did really happen very quickly. And it very was fast. only probably two weeks ago that we were saying, okay, can Brooklyn keep their head above water? If Kyrie and KD are healthy, you've got to be at least a little bit scared. But the wild card is that, are they going to keep their heads? Is there going to be no drama? Two weeks later, he's no longer on the team. Um, Man, where to begin? So what, what, is, um, <laughs> what is the franchise that uh, has the best Kyrie Irving memories? Cleveland? But even then, it didn't end well. I mean, the, Brooklyn would not say they had a good Kyrie Irving experience. I think Boston would point to the same with the way that ended can make a strong case. The bucks were the team that really broke Kyrie Irving. And it's just been, I mean, it's, it's not been great experiences, but it's just been a disaster one after another, ever since that 2019 uh, second round playoff series. Um, I'm with you where on the one hand, I'm surprised, but then like, we can't be surprised anymore that think about how many headlines of the Kyrie Irving podcast you're going to see, that we've already seen this year. I mean, you go back to the summer when he requested a trade. You go back to the bubble when he was trying to start his own league and encouraging players not to play. You go back to the vaccine debate, getting suspended eight games earlier this season and everything that was taking place off the court. Uh, it's it's just been one thing after another. I was telling you before the show, I've never been the guy that just latches on to the lazy narrative of like, well, Kyrie Irving is a cancer and he breaks up locker rooms that – you heard prior to this, but at this point, like I just kind of said, what can you point to where it's been a good experience and it hasn't ended with circumstances like this? So you look at the Mavericks and it's cyclical where whenever you have a superstar, it's only a matter of time before you start to kind of get the eyeballs of, all right, when is this guy going to potentially leave? And when you look at the way things have ended for Dallas, this off season was a disaster you could point to, well, you should have retained Jalen Brunson. And I think trading for Kyrie Irving kind of backs that up. But, you know, it also seems like, given some things that he said, Jalen Brunson wasn't just the money or the way he was treated. He didn't really want to go back there and be paired with Luka Doncic. So if this doesn't work out, and if history is any indication here, it's probably not going to work out. Then you wonder what Dallas did here to give up an unprotected first-round pick in 2029 when Luka Doncic may not be on the team. It's the same thing we talk about with the Bucs. Hmm. And to give up a guy that is a pretty good defensive asset in Dorian Finney-Smith, a pretty good offensive asset in Spencer Dinwiddie. And, you know, look, you can say that that duo makes the Dallas Mavericks a contender in the West 
if everything breaks right, sure, they're going to be very tough to defend. They're also not going to defend anyone. And the West is wide open. I still don't know that I would pencil in the Dallas Mavericks as the favorite. So it seems like oh, and it, it's not like you gave up a ton here, but it seems like this is a very, very high risk trade for the Mavericks. Now, as it pertains to the Bucks, I've seen some victory laps of, well, cross the Brooklyn Nets off the list. That's one fewer team you have to deal with. Yes and no. Because when you look at the package they got back, it's clear they're not trading Kevin Durant, at least not right now. They have no plans to do it. They wanted to bring in pieces that are going to help them now. And that's a big part of that 2029 unprotected pick. The rumored Lakers deal that Champs reported was turned down. That's a deal that's not going to help Dallas or that's not going to help Brooklyn in the short term. So it, I don't take it as a spite move of we're not sending you where you want to go. It's we still want to try to win a title this year and take it on Russell Westbrook and two first rounders. That doesn't help us do it in the short term. They now suddenly have some assets that they could take that Dallas pick that's going to be very, very valuable and say, we're going to use this and some other pieces and bring somebody else in to try and get another score or something else to help out Kevin Durant in a more balanced version of this team. I'm just not sure what that is and if it exists on this trade market. So a couple of things that are interesting. So the Mavericks right now are about a 500 team. And I, I don't think we need to focus on the Mavericks too much because they're in the West. If the Bucs are going to play them, NBA the, finals. And the Bucs are done with them this year. But the interesting thing is they're about a 500 team. But in the West, it's what, four through 13 is separated by like two games. No, that's right. It is crazy in the West. It, the thing that I first thought of and – the contract stuff, and you're right. And but by the way, you're sympathetic to the. We don't want Luca to leave Dallas. Like we went through that. Like it's not fun, right? But but I did put myself in the shoes of, of a Mavericks fan, or tried to to think. Okay, how do I feel about this? Like I understand that the ceiling. You know, if it works out, maybe they can win a title, which is that makes it all worth it. But if it doesn't, and particularly if they extend Kyrie, which you assume that they might try and do that. We'll see if that's the case. But if they do try and extend Kyrie Irving, you've got Luca for another three years under contract. And I just thought of it like for, from my own point of view, what did the Bucs do when Giannis, the contract stuff was there? They got a guy that you might say is not, the ceiling isn't as high as Kyrie Irving with Drew Holiday. That's fine. I would agree with that. But they got a guy that you know was not going to be a problem. And you know that he was going to be very stable, very reliable and bring to a lot to the table that was gonna. It was a safe. It was kind of a safe trade, even if it wasn't the highest ceiling swing. So, yeah, some th some things to be nervous about if you're a Mavericks fan. Well, at this stage in his career, Kyrie Irving is is best used as the third option, and he's he he has been the best in the league at that. I mean, you think back to two years ago, the Bucks won the title. That, that Nets team, when they were healthy, looked as close to unbeatable as I've seen anybody since that Warriors team a couple of years prior to that. But he was the third guy. And for all the talk of, man, how is this going to work with those two and with James Harden? It actually worked pretty well, and, and specifically Harden and KD. And Kyrie was the guy that was just the third scorer. And some of his defensive limitations, you didn't really notice as much in those spots. And, you know, the other thing is if you do sign him, which I would hope you do if you trade for him and give up those assets. But if you do that, to your point about Drew Holiday – Kyrie Irving isn't a guy that you can pencil in for 70 games a season. Like at this point, I don't want to diminish it, but it's almost uh, 50 games, 55 games is what we expect to get from Kyrie Irving on a given year. And, you know, the, the point about the Mavs taking these swings here, I've heard somebody mention, well, it, it has to be somewhat of a good message to Luka Doncic that you, you look at what they've done the last few years that they're at least willing to, to take these chances and try to improve the roster. I would just counter with, look, they're taking swings. They're not swinging at good pitches. When these moves that you're making are Spencer Dinwiddie and Kyrie Irving and Chris Knapps Porzingis, if those are the swings you're taking, maybe lay off and take a couple of walks every now and then. Uh, it is going to be fascinating. But I think as we stick to, to the Bucks now f throughout the rest of this show, I think, the most basic way to look at it, or the most basic way that I at least look at it is get the stars out of the East and you walk away and say, okay, well, at least there's one uh, few, one less star, I should say, in the Eastern Conference. Because talk about all the erratic stuff you want. Kyrie Irving is still a scary player mm -hmm. when you're going up against him. And the fact that he's no longer in the East, 
you have to at least feel good about that uh, if you're a Bucks fan. We're going to move to that and we're going to continue that conversation after we talk about Built Bar. And if you're two thirds through this podcast, you might need to have a Built Bar. And if you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat of calories, then you've got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. We're in Feb now. Uh, some people want to eat healthy. I, I, I always try and eat healthy. But the one thing that confuses me with Built Bar is how it could possibly be healthy because uh, they're covered in 100% chocolate, real chocolate as well. The flavors are ridiculous. The churro, the peanut butter brownie, the coconut almond, which people know that I like. And there's only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein, which is very nice. So uh, you don't... You don't feel like you're eating a healthy food, but it is a delicious snack. And Justin, you can absolutely attest to that because I know you're a fan of Built Bar. And the, the better news right now, I don't know if you've checked this out at your local stores in Milwaukee, but the best news about it is right now, you don't need to go to built.com and wait for the delivery. You can just go to Walmart. You can go to Sam's Club and pick up a box. Have you seen them? Are they out there? Uh, I'll do you one better. I, I recently bought a, uh, a box oh, from yeah. my local Sam's Club. Yeah. That's what we like to hear. So you should be like Justin and go and get a box of Built Bars from Sam's Club or Walmart. Or you can go old school, Built.com. Still, of course, available there. So you can grab a 13-bar box. Uh, enjoy a delicious and healthy treat that is the Built Bar. So the interesting thing that we've heard, as it's just been coming out, I saw Chris Haynes was the first onto this, suggesting that, yeah, there was the potential Lakers trade. We all know Russell Westbrook, that would have been... You know, funny for its own reasons. But another trade, the Phoenix Suns were trying to get in on this. And it was at least he's reporting that Chris Paul, Jay Crowder were in this deal. Now, if you're just straight up asking me, and by the way, Kevin Durant is still absolutely terrifying. I think now they're in a tough situation, pending no more trades, and we'll see what happens over the next few days. Maybe they've got some room to make another move. But yeah, now you're in a situation where Ben Simmons, I thought, was in a pretty good spot as the third best player. He was starting to go okay. We've seen with Kevin Durant out. Like, he's just not a top two player, particularly on offense with Claxton in the lineup. So things get a little bit messy, even though the Nets have got pretty good depth. Like, they get a bunch of good players on this roster. And then, you know, one of the more terrifying players in the league in Kevin Durant. But I said about getting rid of the stars. If you're telling me Chris Paul was going to go there and he was going to be healthy and he was going to play a alongside Kevin Durant, I'm more scared about that than I am Spencer Dinwiddie or Dorian Finney-Smith. Yeah, if you only paid attention early in the season to the Suns, you may think, well, Chris Paul is is just not that guy anymore. And he has clearly taken a step back, but he's been playing much better of late. And, you know, to me, you wouldn't have got any, at least from the reporting of the rumored Proposal, you wouldn't have got any future assets, but if you're trying to win now with the Brooklyn Nets, if that was an actual offer, that is the move that I would have made to bring in those yeah. two guys because that keeps you right up near the top of the Eastern Conference. And this other move, again, I don't think they're done, but I'm just curious what the other offer is because I would assume the Brooklyn Nets – at this point, would love to get off the Ben Simmons contract. That's going to cost you more than that first-round pick that you just got back from the Dallas Mavericks. And they do have some picks they can move, a little bit more than the Bucks, but they gave out some picks as well to acquire that team that has now been broken up in a span of two years. So uh, if the goal is we don't think it's time to take a step back, we're going to hold on to Kevin Durant, let's try to win now, I'm surprised you wouldn't have made that trade with the Suns if that was the offer with those two guys as the main part of the deal. So the Nets are 32 and 20 right now. So they're three and a half games back of the Bucks. Kevin Durant's still not playing. So yeah, we've got a few days before the trade deadline. It will be interesting. The, the, I, th I think it's fascinating that the Nets now, j let's just say this is their team and maybe the chemistry will be great because maybe there's, there's no bad vibes. Everyone comes together. I still think if you have a team with Durant, Simmons, and Claxton's having a pretty good season, then you have all these role players. Like, they've got some pretty good shooters. Like, I think this is a team that can win a bunch of regular season games if Kevin Durant is there. Like, I I'm not dismissing the Nets as quickly as some, mostly just because of the fact they've got Kevin Durant and he is ridiculous. But, you know, we'll see. If they are a team that, that drops down a little bit further, again... I would say you want to make sure if you're the Bucks that you keep winning games and it doesn't end up some sort of some sort of crazy, tricky first round uh, matchup because I don't think that's the type of team anyone wants to see in the first round. 
Um, but this has definitely shifted the Eastern Conference. I think for most most of the year, I've said I think the Celtics and the Bucks are the are a clear favorite, and then I had the Nets as a wild card. This is the reason they're all wild card because we had no idea what was going to happen with this team. I, I remain curious because you can see it either way. Either the Nets are going to go all in to to ensure that Kevin Durant is happy, or they might just go the other way and say, "Well, this is over. We tried." Yeah, I uh, again, I, I think they're going to go all in to make sure, or at least try to go all in to make sure he's happy. Which you can't blame you know, them for. They should if you got Kevin Durant. No, no. But yeah, if you're going to hold on to Kevin Durant, you have to do everything you can to put a championship caliber team around him because he is still maybe the best offensive player uh, in the league. But I, like we were saying before, I just don't see what it is that's out there because anything you would look to of guys that maybe are even hinted as being available – it's going to have to require a third team because, again, the assets that the Nets have, they've acquired some more. But Ben Simmons is going to be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of teams with that contract. So you're going to have to fork over a lot of draft capital, and it's probably going to have to be a three-way or multi-team deal. All right. Well, we're going to be uh, watching with interest with all these teams to see if they make any moves, particularly the ones that we think are going to be competitive in the East uh, with the Bucs and naturally – uh, we're all just hanging out to see if there's any juicy reports or rumors when it comes to the Bucks and a potential <coughs> trade here. Feb 9 being the trade deadline. So it's coming up really quickly. Uh, the Bucks out west, the late nights for local Bucks fans. So, you know, do what you got to do. Hang in there. Watch the game in bed if you want. It's fine. You'll be comfortable. It'll be great. We're still going to have post game shows after all these games. The Blazers tomorrow. Uh, that's Monday nights. Then the Lakers on Thursday night. And the Clippers on Friday night. The Lakers game is the one to watch. We think LeBron is 36 behind. Just quickly, you don't think he's getting 36 against the Thunder? Uh, I don't. I think he's uh I think it's gonna be somewhere around five points short. That it's gonna be one or two baskets. It's gonna be very, very early into the game on Thursday that LeBron becomes the NBA's all-time leading scorer, is my pick. What if LeBron demands a trade in the next 24 hours and he actually breaks the record for another team? Uh, yeah, I saw the other suggestion too <laughs> of, it, you know, if LeBron really wanted to help out the league here, he should just purposely stop shooting. So everybody's just buying up these tickets everywhere that they go. And Kareem is constantly traveling around as well. I love it. I like all those types of theories. All right, make sure you check out the Locked On Game to Game podcast as well. You can get recaps from right around the NBA from all the local experts. Uh, they give little 60-second recaps of the game. So it's actually a really nice way to catch up on everything going on around the league. That's Locked On Game to Game, wherever you get uh, your podcast on the Locked On NBA feed. Of course, we thank you for listening to Locked On Bucks. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notifications, and, and jump in the comments on YouTube today. Uh, let us know what you think. Are you, are you happy with this trade from a Bucks perspective? What are the Mavericks doing? Is Chris Middleton back? All those types of things. Get in the comments. We'll have some fun uh, once this show drops and you get all the way through it. And then we'll be back tomorrow after the Bucks and the Blazers. Hey, they're just looking to keep rolling. We're enjoying this. It's been happy vibes since Chris Middleton came back. We hope to continue that. Uh, make sure you listen to Justin on the Bucks Radio Network as well. We'll catch you after the game.